Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. We are almost done with this map. We have two missions left. I'm going to try to get them done in one episode tonight. Uh, the first mission is pretty easy. It calls for an off-road truck. We got a phone call from town. We're going to go into town and talk to um, the people that want to put the mission on. Apparently, there are some pumps that are located around the map. And we need to go to them with a truck and make sure that they are servicing or working to remove the floodwaters out of the area. Uh, and so we want to go, first of all, downtown to uh, get the map of where these are located so that we can... Um, so that we're able to get this mission completed. So let's head into town. Uh, we're taking our Paystar out tonight. This is, once again... But I believe one of the best starter trucks in the game. Obviously, you can use a scout for some of this, too, if you wanted to use a scout truck instead. But the Paystar just is a, a really good truck. The downside is it does tend to tip a little bit easy when you have, like, these big attachments on the back because it is pretty high-centered. Uh, I don't have the lift kit for this truck yet, so I am trying to uh, get the missions done without using the lift kit. And it doesn't really seem to need it because, once again, it really is already pretty high up. Uh, the other nice thing about the Paystar is it's not super fragile so that when you're traveling, you know, f at speed over the road, since it doesn't travel that fast, it rarely breaks itself on stuff. Uh, whereas, you know, some of these other trucks like the... I love the C70, but the C70 has a tendency to just break. <laughs> you end up cracking stuff up a lot with that thing. So, anyway, we're going to do this, use this truck for these missions. Then I got two other trucks lined up for our... Uh, for the other mission that we have to do. So I'll be back. I'll catch you when I get into town. All right, we've arrived at the mission point. Uh, here is our, this is gonna tell us what we need to do. So let's find out. We're gonna accept. It's time to drain the swamps. We installed some simple pumps out there in the 1970s. They may be, may be a bit old and rusty yet yeah, because they're 50 years old, but they should be functional. See if you can find them. Okay. Sorry, I was hearing gunfire out my window. We do live out in the country a bit, so people do fire off guns occasionally. I wanted to hear if I was hearing different guns or all the same gun. And it was the same gun, so somebody just firing off some rounds for fun. All right, so we're going to go here. This first pumps out in the middle of the swamp. We're just going to do these during the daylight, so I, if it, we get to nighttime, I will wait. Because I don't want to um, do them at night. It's hard to see where you're going in the swamps. We'll get on low plus. We're probably going to have to switch down to low because this is muck, muck, muck. And this truck is heavy with this back on. See here, we are really bogging in. And this is the these are the upgraded mud tires for this truck. So you can see here, we're get we're not getting stuck, but we are definitely slow progress. It's not great. <laughs> Come on, baby. We got a long way to go. This is like the worst road in the game here, or in this on this map. There are worse roads. I like the fact, though, that you are able to just, you know, once you get the mud tires, things do get better. And the SnowRunner transmission definitely helps. And there, you find the SnowRunner transmissions for the trucks pretty much within the first couple of Michigan maps and maybe the first, well, Alaska maps. I didn't find that the Alaska maps were too, too difficult to unlock, uh, but you did have to do some scouting because if you don't, like, like I went through it, I don't, I didn't want to fix anything because I want to do that on video for YouTube. So I had to work my way around some of the roadblocks with the scout trucks and it was with my, you know, GMC primarily, or the, I'm sorry, the Chevy pickup. And it, it was pretty, 
you know, there was some pretty rough areas to get through with the pickup truck, but I did, I was able to do it. It just, it wasn't easy. I'm going to try to stick with this road as, whoa, as long as I can. Wow, that branch really jammed us. That was a rough stop. Ribbit, ribbit. I hear froggies. But uh, once again, I just love the Paystar. It is, it's a really strong performer. And it's, you can get it pretty early on in the game if you're willing to sell some of your trucks. Now, some of the players I'm talking to, like, I know, like, Mr. Micah doesn't, he's, he's really worked on not selling any of the trucks. He's wanted to go through the game all the way and keep all the trucks. So he's kept every single truck that he has. And that's very um, honorable. You know, I sold stuff right away, but um, that is one way to play it. You won't have a ton of money, but when you sell the tra excess trailers off, you'll still have enough to get upgrades and stuff, so you should be just fine. Plus, you make money doing the missions. So. Oh, no. Don't bog. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, crapsicles. Yeah. Saw that coming a mile away. Okay. Good thing that there's stuff around to grab. Still gonna get bogged, but there's more trees to grab onto, so we're okay. All right, so the first one is here. That was not easy, but I didn't expect it to be. Like I said, I I knew this was gonna be a little bit difficult. Now the sad part is we have to go back. Uh, the next one's over by the farm. Uh, the, they showed us the map, and I know where they all are now. But we're gonna have to go back through this glop. through this filth. I'll try to go this way and see if I can't find a path. Don't want those wheels to spin too quick. Don't want to get hung up on the trees either. And we just ran out of Theme again. Come on. <laughs> We're so close to the road, but yet so far. Come on. Nope. Will this pull us? That's the question. Without coming out. Yep, it is. Whew, thank goodness. At least they put a bunch of dead trees in here so you can get back out, but... Yeah. Once again, this game is partly about winching. I know some people get disgusted at the idea that they have to actually get out and winch, but... You do need the winches, for sure. And the heavy truck winches do help. It's worth getting the bigger motor winches and stuff when you can. So, you see this pulls them right out. There's no issues. And so we are back on the road. We're going to head over to the farm. I'll bring you guys with me. What the heck? I figure each of these missions will take us about a half an hour. Maybe a little bit more, but... They're not bad missions. Oh, and before we leave town, we need to trigger the missing machinery mission. 
Um, we've got another call coming in on our way through town. We're going to stop by the local um, diner and have a talk and, and see if we can't uh, help out. So we'll find out about that mission and talk to the factory worker who's telling us about it and see if we can't pick up the job. A little role play there for you. Once again, the Paystar is probably my favorite truck. The, like I said, the Fleet Star is good. To me, the Fleet the the Paystar is just way more designed for off road work. The pay, the Fleet Star is great, but I'm just I think the this is probably one of the best early trucks in the game. So. Alfie is sick. All right, hold on one second, folks. Let me get out of this muck. I got a phone call coming in, so just one second. We're going to pause the game once I get up on this mud shelf. Pause. All right, moving on. Whoops. I hate when I do that. Sometimes I bump the, the trigger. Ooh, train starting up. Uh-oh. Muck. There's a train parked in my backyard, and now he's starting up. It woke my doggy up. But it's okay, Grammy. It was just a train. It's been a very interruptive tonight. I've had night tonight. I've had gunshots, tr broken train. My dog is scared. My wife's having a painly a painy nose. Let's see if we can't climb up out of this. We're doing good, though. Look at that. <laughs> we made it. That wasn't too bad. I think that's maybe the worst one, but we'll see. This is These are all muck pits, so let's go ahead and head over to the diner and see what they want us to do on this mission. Oh, crap. I was trying to... I, mm. Oh no, stop. No. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm just going to have some breakfast here by the river. Well, I banged up the gearbox. Whoops. Let's see if we can't fix that. That's why we have a service truck. Let's repair our truck. Repair the thing. Stupid idiot for driving like a moron. All right, here we go. All right, hold on a second, folks. We actually have an Antonio's Pizza. And we are going to take this mission uh, for the missing machinery while we're here. And then we're going to head on and finish the other mission. So we'll follow that in a little bit. But we need to follow these other two pumps. All right, so we are working our way to the pump that is by the farm. It's not really necessarily next to the farm. It's kind of out in the middle of a swamp near the farm. I suppose it's on the farm's property. Oh boy. Oh boy. Mud tires don't do so great off or on road.
Now, what's interesting, I've never actually been, I don't know if anyone has gone off-road over there. There's, like, that river and stuff down there. I wonder if there's, like, a hidden park or something over there. They, they, this is the kind of areas that you find, like, if you go and explore them, you'll find sometimes extra spare parts or extra upgrades that you didn't, that you missed. All right, so this next pump is out here in the water. I'm going to try to see what the fastest way would be to get in here. Let's take a look and see where exactly it is. It looks like if we follow this road that we're already on, and then make a left here, that's going to be the best way to go. So let's go ahead and do that. So there is our spot. The I can see the pump from here. We're going to have to go out there. I think if we follow the ground the best that we can, just going along here. Man. There's the pump. What are you singing? All right, so there's our pump, and we're gonna head. We're gonna make a U-turn here and turn around and head on back. We need the diff lock on. This is really mucky, though. We gotta watch. Now I might stop at the garage on the way back to refuel the truck so that we don't have to use fuel up from our container. Uh, because we're going to use this in the next mission also uh, as our service truck for the truck that's doing the actual mission. haven't decided which truck I'm going to use for that yet, but uh, I, the missing uh, pieces. Use the Fleet Star. It's probably the best one because you have to go off-roading, but you also have to use the crane and load it up. Yeah, that's what I was, I was thinking the Fleet Star probably would be the best one for that one. And I haven't used... Dang it. I've done it several times with the Paystar. I've also done it with the GMC. Because I've done it multiple times on your map. <laughs> hey, my wife, whose nickname is Fleet, by the way, is telling me to use the Fleet Star. So we'll do it just for her. All right, so we've left the garage. We are going to have to get, let's see, I hate buying trailers, but we do need a flat trailer. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this out here. And I'm going to park this truck right here. I'm trying to think of different ways we could do this. Um, we could use that flatbed trailer that I've been saving. And get off. No, we can't really use that. That's going to be too difficult. Um, come on, find the right button. We're going to go to the garage entrance. And the truck storage. And we're going to grab our, uh, let's see, the Fleet Star. I think my wife is definitely right on this one. Um, we're going to put the uh, crane on it. So, nope, yep, and we're going to put, let's see, we probably should do the shorter bed. Will that work? That should work. Okay, so, so I was thinking that I was going to buy a trailer, but my wife has a good point. She's like, you know, Arthur... You could just make two trips because it's like right next to where you deliver them. Oh, yeah. Duh. Oh, you see that tire go flying? I have no idea what happened there. Yikes. All right, so we're gonna park this truck right here. Change trucks, and we're gonna we're gonna connect our winch. What, honey? All 
I hope not. Uh, attached trailer, no. Where's the winch? Oh, run, motor's not running. So, Duh. Duh. All right, so we're going to attach the winch. Winch. We're going to winch and drive. Winch and repeat. So we've got our little trusty Fleet Star with us. It's nice. And the one good thing about the Fleet Star is even with the uh, a raise kit or the lift kit, it's still fairly low. While in general that would be a detriment, for this mission it's actually a positive thing because we don't want the truck to tip over as we're loading stuff in the mountains. There's a possibility that it could flip. Uh, keeping that lower center of gravity will keep us from tipping that truck over. So. sun is starting to go down so we'll probably we'll see what time it is when we get up to where the last pump is but if it's getting darker than this which it probably will I'm probably just gonna we'll let the night pass and then do the mission in the morning because I don't want to get um, bogged down in the swamp in the dark that's gonna be a pain in the butt so I'd rather wait till morning to get it done so let's just get up to there we'll set up quote unquote camp and spend the night up by the um, by the lake. I am glad they brought the winching system over from Mudrunner. Um, it's nice that the other trucks drive with you as you're pulling them. That does help quite a bit. You don't have to, well, my camera's getting all screwed up because of the mountains. It just helps because then you don't have to like just drag the truck. It actually pulls with you. The downside is it uses fuel up in that second truck, but um, it does help you get through places like this. So. so in the morning, we'll finish up that pump mission and then we'll go ahead and finish the maintenance or the missing uh, machinery mission. And we'll be done on this map aside from those little races. Once again, I'm going to do the races once I get to uh, Russia and find some good off-roading trucks, and I'll bring those back with me. So we'll do those missions with better better off-road trucks to do the races to kind of make sure we get the best times done and, uh, and go from there. I think my favorite, I've been kind of previewing what's in Russia. They have this car that looks like a Volkswagen Rabbit. It's called the Don, <laughs> but you can put like monster truck tires on it and stuff. And it goes from really stupid to like ridiculously overpowered because um, it's very lightweight. So it just kind of floats over the mud and then it has monster truck tires. It's really cool. So we're going to buy one of those and then use it for those missions when we get back here. Also, it burns almost no fuel. That's the other great thing about it. So that ought to be fun. So once again, we have our two workhorse trucks for the game. Definitely the Paystar and the Fleet Star. But I'm definitely not going to discount the GMC. The GMC that you start with, actually, once you get the mud tires for it and the diff locks and the lift kit, it's actually a really, really good truck. So, And those parts are all on this map or the second Michigan map. So you have the parts pretty quickly for that truck, and it becomes a pretty good truck at least as good as the fleet star so we're going to stop the engine on this truck and we're gonna put the parking brake on and then we're going to change trucks over to the fleet star and we're gonna stop the engine on this truck and the parking brake is on but we don't need it on and then we're gonna go ahead and let the night pass so I will see you guys in the morning hello I have the time fast forwarder. Oh, I'm still recording. Whoops. All right, so we've arrived up at the pumps. I might have missed some video. I'm not sure. I thought I had it on pause, but maybe I didn't. I don't know. We'll find out later. The whole point is you've seen most of the mission, so... A little frustrating, but 
Uh, we bought the we brought the Fleet Star up, and we've got the Pay Star up here. Our two good trucks. Mm, why not? This truck is boss. All right, so we have made it onto the first island, and we're going to just rush back. The nice thing is we're not really getting too bogged down. Whoa, and I forgot my diff box. And yet we're still moving along pretty good. Uh-oh. We were moving along really well until now, and we've come to a complete halt. And this is where it's really boggy here. Anytime you add the water to the mud, you're in trouble. So we're gonna have to winch. Um, let's see, can we reach? We can reach that tree right there, and that's it. I might not have, maybe I shouldn't have put that service trailer on it, but we, we're gonna need it for the next part of the, the, or for the next mission anyway, so. There we go, not too bad. Ta-da! We made it, 3,000 bucks, and several experience points later. So now, mission machinery has come up. And that is our next mission here. So we're going to go back and grab the Fleet Star and take it with us. This spot's really mucky for some reason. We should be able to pull through, though. Playing with the Fleet Star, or the play, the Pay Star, in the reeds. My wife has never seen a real cattail before. I'm pretty sure they have cattails in England. But maybe not where she lives. We definitely have them here, in droves. Where's the road? There it is. We're going to bash our way to glory. All right, so here is the Fleet Star that we brought up. I don't know, once again, I, I don't know what I recorded and what I didn't. Somehow things got messed up, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> Hopefully it's all there. Uh, all right, so here's our, there's that. And we're going to go ahead and check out the route that we're going to take. I think we're just going to follow the back road to the factory because we have to go to, well, we have to go to the drilling spare parts. And really, I think the fastest way is just to cut back. I am. The back road to the factory. What I think is interesting is when you're in the shop, these trucks look like super red. But then out here in the field, like that that um, Fleet Star really looks like candy apple red. This truck kind of still looks red, but it's still more of a scarlet. It's not... Mm. Go to sleep. Moving on up to high gear. Oh, wait, I don't think that other truck has high gear. And now we're really in the muck. Have a little help from the Fleet Star. If you think this is bad, it's just going to get worse. I don't think I've taken you guys down where we're going uh, in the swamp that we're about to hit. Um... Yet, because I've known it's there and I've stayed away from it. And then the one episode that I did go down, I went in the P12, and unfortunately my recorder didn't work. So you guys missed out all of the rescues on this map because I thought it was recording and it was recording a black screen. 
So um, I couldn't, you know, that, like you guys missed that part of it. Uh, so you never have seen this swamp before. It's pretty bad. Uh, it's probably the worst spot on this map. Might be the worst spot in the region um, because you kind of have to go through it or you have to do big detours to get around it. But it's doable. It just is. It is a mess. Sometimes you get through it unscathed. Sometimes it takes like 45 minutes to get through and it, it's just, it could be a disaster. Hopefully tonight it'll go easy. The last time I went through, I got through mostly without a problem. And I had a really bad truck, so, but with good tires. Now, well, the reason why I use high gear, and once again, high gear allows you to um, keep the throttle on. The truck will not slow down to shift gears, um, so it keeps you good doing forward progress. Now, it's not as fast. It's like gear two. It's not as fast as going into full auto, but like full automatic, but the high gear does help you keep speed going, especially if you have hills to climb and stuff. It'll, it'll keep, or mud to, to cross. So... That's why I use it in those situations. Get that diff lock on. And we really are going to try to follow the road. If you go off into the marsh, that's when things get really bad. But if you can follow this road without exiting into the marsh, you are much, you'll be able to make it through without a problem. You just can't get off into those marshy sections or you'll get really stuck. You can see here we're just going right through, no problems. Stay on the road. Uh, there's a couple of missions. I think there's one mission back here where you have to go pull a trailer out, if I remember correctly, and that's one of the ones that you guys missed out on. And you need a pretty big husky truck to get that out. You'll need mud tires and all-wheel drive and go to sleep. Good luck getting it up with the getting out with the GMC. That's all I'm saying. It can be done, but it's much easier to do it with the right truck and the the. The Paystar is the right truck in this case. I made the mistake the one time I came through here of trying to cut across straight here. Like, oh, that looks real easy to cut across and go to the road over there. Don't do it. It's the pit of heck. You will never get out. Even here, you can see we're having some, some severe problems. This is a mucky mess. Stay on target. What a mush pit. But we've made it to the other side and safely. And now we just got to climb up this slippery slope. And we should be almost to the factory and right near our objectives. All right, so we're going to drop this truck off here. Um, we're going to, let's see, I'm going to refuel. I love the way it assumes that I want to refuel my truck from the Fleet Star rather than from my maintenance add-on. Like, seriously? So we're going to fill up the, the Paystar, and we're going to fill up the Fleet Star. And I'm going to repair this truck. Stop engine. Repair. And we got this truck. Let's go grab our first load. Look, look how much smaller the Fleet Star is than the Paystar. You can see how much taller the Paystar is than the Fleet Star when you compare them side by side. 
Doesn't mean that the Fleet Star is bad, though. Once again, this is a really good truck. It's just... It does definitely have some issues off-road, but it's because it's so bouncy. It does fine off-road, but it bounces a lot. That's my biggest problem with it. It's hard to handle. Fun, 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 fun. But the most wonderful thing about Fleet Star is I'm the only one. It's not the only one, though. Everybody has one of these, so... I will say, though, once again, this is one of my favorite looks. Like, it's just that ugly 70s truck, and I love it. It's a great-looking truck. There's nothing... Well, yeah, there's nothing pretty about it. It's just so ugly that it's functional. No, because what's funny is International kind of went... We were talking about this on our Truck Sim stream tonight. International, like in the 80s, just dropped all the looks, and they just made their trucks look like squares. I don't know what happened because they had like this ugly, great, great, like ugly looking truck thing going. And it, it was part functional, but it was also partly like not bad design. Like it actually was so ugly that it was lovable. And then they just kind of lost that. They just, for whatever reason, they just decided, let's make all of our trucks square. And they stuck with that for almost 30 years to the point where you don't even really notice international trucks anymore because they all look the same. All right, so let's go ahead and activate our anchors, and we're going to take the crane up and hold on one second, folks. All right, let's pick this. Let's pick this crap up. What about the game, honey? Well, the P12 is long and skinny and has. Um, uh, six wheels the p16 is wider and has um, 10 wheels however you can also configure the p12 to have 10 wheels they're just narrower the also the p12 has more attachments available yes Um, so mo my wife wants to know if I could compare her to any truck in SnowRunner. I don't even want to go there. Because no I, I, I sense a trap coming. Why did it load me to the... Why did it load it to the back? Stop! Okay, there we go. These are probably the hardest two boxes to recover. Yes, I know. The question is, if, if I could compare my wife to any truck in the game, which truck would it be and why? Answer very carefully. Tread with caution on those kind of questions. I, I, I'm thinking. I don't even know. I'm thinking about it. Let's see here. We're going to activate the anchors, and we're going to take the crane out. What truck would my wife be and why? I'm trying to think of all the trucks that are in the game. I haven't come up with a good answer yet, so stop looking at me like that. No, let me finish first. Um, what truck would Moni be? Um, And what would be the reason why? That's a that's a that's a pretty deep question, actually. Like it could you could really take that like very seriously and be in big trouble if I answer it wrong. <laughs> um, no, you 
No, I'm, I don't even know how to answer. I'd have to. I have to kind of look. I'm looking through the trucks in my head, and just and and deciding what truck you are. Okay, Moni's gonna. If I if I was a truck, what would I be, Moni? Why would I be the P16? I'm wide. Okay, thanks, thanks. I am reliable, yes. Oh, you can always trust. Okay, that's cute. And I can she can always trust me to get her out of any situation. I was going to kind of say and I I'm trying to think. There's just so many trucks to pick from and reasons why they'd be good fits that I'm struggling. And I don't know any of the Russian trucks even. Um, but you're definitely European, so you must have to be a Russian truck. I can't think of any trucks that are, like, aesthetically pretty. I just, I'm struggling here. I know, I, I am. You're asking me questions that are, you know, truck you are, you're the Hummer H2. Because you're sleek and modern and beautiful, and yet you still are tough and get the job done. She's so, she's so, You asked! You're the one that started all this, anyway. I think that was a good answer. I think that was honest. I know, I'm not very good at romance. You know that. It's a terrible answer. <laughs> uh, women women in their games I'm not I don't do very well I don't pass the test well I'm glad you think so anyway my wife says I passed the test all right so let's get that second load we're doing fine I forgot this truck is fairly fuel efficient so it's not we're not doing too, too bad on gasoline. Oh, we just damaged our shocks, but not too bad. All right, there is our Paystar. Slow it down just a little bit. So this is, you know, once again, the Fleet Star is probably one of the best trucks in the game. I, I can't argue with it. A lot of people do all the missions with it. My only gripe, well, there's two gripes. One, this. It is really not designed to, to cross over rough terrain. Uh, it does well in all circumstances, but when you get into rough terrain, it does bounce quite a bit, and it is pretty unstable. Alright, shush. But the other thing I don't like, and I know people are using this as a semi-hauler, but the issue that I have with this truck as a semi-hauler is that the Low hitch sits just above the middle of the uh, axles or the bogies in the back. Uh, and so you have this really long uh, 
section of metal framework that goes to the back of the truck. And all of that is is underneath the trailer as you pull it. If you're going on flat roads, that's not a problem. But as soon as you get into areas where you have um, a lot of hills, that will catch on the trailer and lift the front of the truck off the ground. So you can no longer steer. Uh, the, um, the Kodiak has the same exact problem. So I have to go in, when I go and select a truck for a different type of mission, like if I have to pull a semi-trailer, I'll almost invariably go to either the Paystar or the GMC um, because those trucks put the hitch towards the back of that frame instead of in the middle. Um, but where this truck and the Kodiak put it in the middle, so you end up with this frame like jamming into the bottom of the, tra the trailer and causing the semi-truck to lift off the ground uh, on any kind of down incline. So when you go over the top of a hill... Your wheel, your front wheels will just come off the hill, and you can't steer. So, did I miss the? Oh no, I didn't. It's right there. Like, man, it looks like I missed. It's funny, I went to a client's today. They had two computers that needed memory and a third one that needed memory. But I didn't tell them to, how did I miss that? I didn't tell them to get the memory for the third computer. I just said, order it for these two computers and we'll talk. That third one might need to be upgraded, you know. But if he's happy with it, let's just leave it. Well, they didn't listen and they decided to take it into their own hands and they just ordered memory for all three computers. Well, that third computer was a different model that was like four years older and I'm, I'm like I don't think this RAM's going to fit. Oh no, no, we got it. I'm like, it's the same RAM as the other computers. No, it should be fine. <laughs> of course, you know, it doesn't. It's it, The computer was using PC2 RAM. If you guys remember the PC2 uh, RAM and those RIMs and then uh, the other computers were DDR3. And I'm like, well, no, I'm sorry, this this does not work. And in fact, that computer is so old that you can't, you can only get four megabyte kits for that computer. So that was at the maximum RAM that it already could have, which was four megabytes. <laughs> Cause that was back when windows, that was back when windows was 32 bit. And so you could only get, um, and the headlights on, there we go. You could only get four megabytes of RAM cause windows was 32 bits. So four was the biggest you could see. So some companies felt it was not necessary to actually put more than four slots for four gigabytes of RAM or in, in a machine. So I had to break them the bad news. Sorry, guys. You're going to have to either get a new computer or just leave it as it is. But the guy that runs it is totally happy. All he does is check email on it. And he's like, nah, it's fine. I'm like, all right. It's funny. It's the owner of the company. He's such a laid back guy. He's the owner and he has the worst computer. Usually, you know, the owner has the best computer in the company. But this guy's totally, like, his principles are totally different. He's like, no, I want my employees to have the best. Like, I don't need it. I'll just, I just take what I need. You know, I want them to have the better computers. So, he's a real good guy. Just in general, he's like that. I've worked with him before. We actually, years ago, um, I, I met him. I forgot how I meet Mark. I think Greg from Woodsy's introduced us, the guy from the music store. Um, and we started talking, and he's like, you know, I, I'd like to do a project someday. Like, I'd like to record my own album. And uh, I was like, well, I have like a little mini studio. I don't, you know, do a lot, but for, you know, I'd like to help you with your project, you know, throw me a couple bucks and, you know, we'll, we'll work it out, you know. And he ended up paying me close to $1,000 for the project. I didn't ask for anything. He, he just paid it. But, um, you know, I helped him record all that stuff. I wrote, wrote guitar parts for him and stuff. But we, we spent, you know, several months recording an album, and it actually was, it came out, you know, great. And um, so, you know. We've pretty much been friends ever since, but uh, it's kind of neat to, you know, have worked with him, and you know, and he also owns this cleaning company that's very successful in the area that I live. Dang it, my allergies are kicking in. My eyes are super itchy. And we'll set this down.
So going forward, once again, I I wanted to give you guys some some uh, some meat for the last two episodes where we actually did the whole uh, mission. Like you got to see the whole things happen. But from this point forward, we'll go back to cutting our videos a little shorter and and uh, editing some of the stuff out. I just it's fun to try different stuff sometimes, but I know that most people like to see things go quick and be done. So uh, we'll go going back to that format after this video. I just wanted to kind of have fun and do this though. So it's taken us a full day, but we finished that mission, and we're about to finish this mission. We finished the uh, pump mission, the drainage issues, or whatever it's called. And now we're moving on to finish the missing machinery mission. And we are done. Once we're done with this, if we don't tip... Oh, wow. It just kept going. Uh, we are done with the missions on this map, aside from those couple uh, race missions, the speed missions. Come on. Come on, little beetle. The fleet star does not let down. We can slowly pull our way out of that, that situation there. A lot of bad camber here. We really got to watch coming out of those woods. I might... Mm, we'll end up going over here. We need to really go down the hill a bit and then make a sharp turn to the right. Let's see if we can do it without tipping. So far, so good. A little bit of weight on that side, but we're doing okay. And every inch that we travel, we get safer. Okay, good. We've made it out. That's the most difficult part right there. We'll go ahead and put it in low plus, and I'm just going to travel around in low plus for a little bit. I don't want to go too fast on this road. We will. Da Once again, I try to play it so that you don't damage the trucks. You know, I really hate banging the trucks up. And I know that sometimes you have to, or it just happens, but if you're going to drive down this road at 50 miles an hour, you're going to break the truck. Well, that's not very realistic. Nobody in their right minds would do that. And you'll end up bouncing yourself into the ceiling, too, and killing your, breaking your neck. Yeah, I know you would. So, in general, I try to play it a little bit more realistically than most people play it. Not everybody, though. Now, I know out there in TV land, there's those of you that would not uh, do it that way either. You'd do it the same way I'm doing it, so... into high here. We just got to watch around this stuff here. Ugh. There we go. And the sun's going down on our, our work day, but we have completed the hard part. It was just a matter of driving it there. We're almost there. There's our our repair truck. We'll come get we'll come back and get gas once we're done with the load. Probably do that off camera. Whoa, boing. Hi, Paystar. Thank you for helping. All right, so that does it. We are done with this map, and uh, we'll be moving on to Smithfield Dam on the next uh, episode. So that's good news. We've got our fleet together still, and we've got... Uh, 
the old truck's working well. We should hopefully find another truck on the, whoops, on the next map. Uh, and I know what it is, and I'm excited to try it out. It seems like it's a really good truck. I think you guys will like it too. So, have a great night. Be sure to subscribe. Here's the last two parts of the map. And we'll catch you on the next exciting episode of SnowRunner. Have a great night, guys. See you next time. Bye.